So our trigger warning for this episode is pretty straightforward. Um, it is sexual assault. By demons. By demons. <laughs> by demon. Anyway, spoiler alert. You'll find out about that later if you keep listening or you can skip Tanya Lee's story. Sorry. How awful. Izzy. What? What? Izzy decided it was it's time to munch. Time. Izzy, it's not time to munch. Did you have this thing when you were a kid where you like misheard lyrics to songs all the time and you were like so confident in that that that's how you sang them? Is that just me? 100%. Like, here I am. Rock me like your sugar cane. That was one. Fly like an eagle. Let your spirit be infinito. infinito. Yep. What was my other one? Um, oh, it was that Michael Jackson song that Why You Want to Trip on Me. Grown people smoking pottery. <laughs> he says, who can't write or read? I heard smoking pottery. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Tanya Lee. And I'm B. And this is How Awful. How awful. How awful. Isn't it so awful? Tanya's home from work now. I am. It is 1045 in the, the evening on Thursday. The, yeah, this is the latest. This is the latest that yeah. we've recorded. This is the latest recording we've done, and it's going to get spoopy. Yeah. Oh. So, are we going to be able to sleep Oh, tonight? yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a really spoopy one. Yeah. I'm excited to hear it, though. Oh, yeah. But it's probably going to be, you're probably going to laugh at a lot of it. I'm going to laugh at it? I think so. I'm going to laugh at an exorcism? <laughs> I mean, you know what? It's, just it's, when it's I'm in the mood. It's not just an exorcism. The, oh. the category is demons and oh. exorcists. You know what? When I'm in the mood for a good chuckle, I just think, you just about, think about demons, demons. and exorcisms. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Yeah. Demon possession is not yeah. something. I think you'll find my topic interesting. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. <clears throat> so something interesting just happened to me. I was peeing before the start of our recording. And I could hear you on my headphones. Um, and Moosh decided that he was going to break into the bathroom to check on me because I That's just got normal. home and we haven't had any interaction yet. Right. So he barges. He in- ha- You haven't tried to pet him and he hasn't allowed it. He yeah. must give you the opportunity. He barged into the bathroom. Uh-huh. Opened the door and like rubbed my legs. And I'm like, this is an HR issue. HR issue immediately right off the bat. Um, So I'm putting in a formal complaint. Okay. My assistant will not stop barging in on me while I'm peeing yes. to rub on me. Wow. That's a really bad complaint. Yeah. But he's a white man. So, um, yeah, we're just going to have to let it slide. You know what you should do? Mm. You should lock the bathroom door. Maybe it was your fault. Well, I probably didn't shut it. As yeah. see, close, it wasn't as close, but see, see I didn't it's ask not for it. Fault. Hey, I didn't you ask. You left the door open oh a little my bit. God, <laughs> <laughs> this is getting problematic. We're, we're triggering people. <laughs> oh my god! All right, well, Izzy, did you enjoy your munch? She munched. She enjoyed her munch. Yeah, now she's just staring like. Ugh, did you doing, clock out for your break? They're doing the talking thing again. What am she I even paid for? This, she hates this part. I wonder how many people. I hate this part. <laughs> <laughs> I actually probably would think that people maybe enjoy when the, we... Uh, when we talk to the assistants. When we talk to the assistants. I just, I want... Okay, guys, here we go. Show of hands. How many listeners do we have? This is not looking hopeful. It's not working. <laughs> There's no way of knowing, and it's so aggravating. Yeah. We know how many downloads we have. We yeah. don't know. It's looking, we don't know how many listeners. It's looking good. Keep telling your friends. Keep telling your friends. But, like, talk to us. Yeah, let us know what's up. We will be your friends. We Why miss are you, you shy? Shy, shy. Run the hush, hush. I, I know. What you is... were singing. No, it's Shy Ronnie. Oh. Not Rhonda. Shy Ronnie. <laughs> shy Rihanna Ronnie. On SNL? No, I'm saying, what is that? Is it, I think it might be Boy George. Oh, I like, I like Boy George. Shy, shy. Hush, hush. How do I? Oh, I don't remember. Is that Boy George? Like... Hey, Siri. <laughs> Who sings shy, shy, hush, hush, I do I? Hey, Apple, do you want to promote us? <laughs> Catch a goo goo? That's definitely not Boy George. <laughs> well, anyway, here so we, we have, yeah, we have paranormal and, and demons. Demons slash exorcisms. So it's kind mm-hmm. of a, it's kind of a free for all paranormal episode. Mm-hmm. So if you're scared of ghosties and scary, and scary demons, paranormal type things, um, this is your trigger warning in Turn the middle of the episode. Around. Every now and then I get a little bit on. 
see, there we go. There we go again. That's the worst. <laughs> this is our musical episode. Every now and then I get a little bit uh, paranoid. And then I see the look in your eyes. Turn around. Bright eyes. Why? Do you remember that music video? Um, what is with the guys with the no, glowing headlight eyes? Do not talk shit and about the ninjas, that music video. The ninjas. It is a beautiful masterpiece. Right, fine. It is an art project. Fine. Okay, it's true. It looks like something a Columbia student would make. Hey. Columbia, Chicago, not to be confused with <laughs> the Ivy League. Yeah, that's where I went to college. That's where I, we I went to college. It, yeah, we. I just let everybody believe I went to fancy film school. Yeah, my favorite thing ever to do is when somebody asks me what college I go to, I say, oh, I went to Columbia, and I watch their face get really impressed, and I just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> just leave it there. I went to Columbia. I went to Actually, Columbia. Actually, no, I'm, you know me, I'm way more modest than that. I, I'm like, I went to Columbia College, Chicago, don't get excited. <laughs> it's open admissions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna self- Hey, Nellie's daughter goes to Columbia, okay? So, that's, we have that. Shimmy, shimmy, cocoa puff, I said to me now. Say it again. Again. What was with the night cocoa puffs? Light it up and I'm still off. upset about Scooby Snacks. Yeah, well, I'm pretty happy about it. Anyway. Anyway, let's hear your story. My germs. Your germs. My germs. I'm going to tell you a paranormal story. I wonder and if I, I, I screwed myself over because this font is small. Oh, you did that to yourself. Okay. I'll do my best. Uh-oh. Is he? No. Don't I'll do pull. my best. No. Please Uh-oh. don't pull on my headphone. It didn't. I didn't. I'm ready. All right. It's built in 1880. And completed in 1884 by Edward Cabot Clark, the founder and CEO of the Singer Manufacturing Company. They made sewing machines. Oh. Looming over the northwest corner of Central Park West on what is now known as the Upper West Side. Ooh. The Dakota is best known for three things. Oh, sick. Being the exterior of the Bramford in Roman Polanski's Rosemary's Baby. So Mm -hmm. back to Rosemary's Baby. The location where the great John Lennon was murdered with five shots to the back in the apartment building's entrance archway. Ugh, let's sigh. And for the enormous amount of paranormal activity. Oh, suck it to me. Notoriously difficult to gain residency, the most notable rejected applicants include Billy Joel, Carly Simon, Antonio Banderas, and Melanie Griffith, and Gene Simmons. However, the Dakota happily accepted John Lennon and Yoko Ono, both of which cited paranormal activity in their apartment. Sick. John claimed to spot UFOs from his apartment window. Could also be the enormous amounts of drugs that John did. No, John's my friend. But he also told tales of seeing a spirit he called the crying lady. A spirit seen and heard by other residents walking the halls crying, suspected to be Elise Vesley, the manager of the Dakota through the 40s, sorry, through the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Elise was into paranormal stuff herself, believed Mm. she had psychic powers. Um... As is often the story when it comes to ghosts, Mrs. Vesley suffered a great tragedy when her son was hit by a truck outside the Dakota. So a lot, I I found in doing this research, a whole lot of people died right outside of the Dakota. Oddly enough. Yeah, now I understand why Elise is so melancholy. It's like, it's like a Bermuda Triangle of death. This sounds like American Horror Story. A little bit. It does. The hotel, yeah. But that was, the hotel was based off of the Cecil. And the Cecil is literally four blocks from where I work. (sighs) We gotta go to there. Yeah. Well, now it's not, it's not the Cecil anymore. It's like a stay on Main thing. I don't know. Anyway, the boy died. And by all accounts. (laughs) The boy died anyway. Mrs. Vesley was (laughs) never the same again. She took to being extra nice and extra protective of the children that lived in the Dakota. Maybe that is why she still walks the halls today. She just wants to make sure all the kids are doing okay. Oh, sad. Or maybe she's trying to help the young girl. The young girl has been a resident of, of the Dakota for ages. First, first seen by painters, it is reported that the young girl wears a yellow taffeta dress that nearly matches her blonde hair, white stockings, and black leather shoes with silver buckling. She bounces a red ball down the halls and often is seen entering or exiting closets. When the painters first saw the young girl, she looked at them and proclaimed, it's my birthday, before disappearing down a hall. (laughs) Not long after, one of the painters died when he fell off a scaffolding and down a stairwell. Everyone decided to blame the young girl, though it seems far-fetched. Okay. After the death of actress Judy Holliday, a Dakota resident, workers who were repairing her apartment felt like they were being watched, and several of them spotted the ghostly figure of a young man with the face of a small child. What? I don't know. I don't like it. Uh, adult body baby head? A, adult body baby head. Oh, yeah. no. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> nope. 
Several of the Dakota's residents have reported objects moving on their own. John Painter was an electrician working on the Dakota in the late 1930s. The wiring of the building was, according to Painter, pretty crazy, with bits and bobs he had never seen before. Often, Painter would take pieces of the circuitry home to try and figure them out. It was late one night when, while Painter was in the basement of the Dakota working on one of these weird pieces when he came across the weirdest thing he ever did see. What could it be? Is it me? I hope not. (laughs) It's, It's a really funny image if it is. (laughs) <laughs> From out of the shadows of the basement came a short man. <laughs> the short man wore a frock coat and a winged collar. He had small steel-rimmed glasses that were held up by a very large nose. A well-kept beard could not hide the very fake-looking wig the short man wore. The short man walked up to Painter and angrily glared at him for what, according to Painter, felt like minutes. Then, as if this were a normal thing to do, the short man pulled off his wig and violently shook it in Painter's face. Before vanishing. Hit me. Hit you. Painter had four more run-ins with this short-wigged ghost and never figured out who it was, although he greatly resembled... Resembled? Resembled? (laughs) Did he He greatly resembled? (laughs) Did he He, remember to resemble? (laughs) He greatly resembled Edward Cabot Clark, the man who built the Dakota. Oh. Apparently a short man? Yeah, a short-wigged man with a (laughs) big old schnoz. Apparently, Clark, who died before the Dakota was finished, wasn't all that jazzed about this electrician screwing with his building. Mr. Clark wasn't the only guy to be upset with changes to the Dakota. Joel Melsner, considered the greatest set designer of the golden age of Broadway, lived in the, in the Dakota for years. Melsner died in a cab outside of the Dakota Jesus. in 1976. He was on the way back from visiting his doctor, who was clearly not very good at his job. No. And by all accounts, he was not happy about it. Hmm. In the weeks following Melsner's death, workers at the Dakota was be- were besieged by something throwing items around the basement. Wilbur Ross, a tenant of the building at the time, was called into the basement by a porter who saw a shovel fly off its spot on the wall and land in the middle of the room, some 20 feet away. Not long after, bags of garbage started to fly about the basement. While Wilbur was not present for these moments, he claimed to have seen a large iron bar come off the wall by its own accord and fly at him, landing at his feet. Wilbur attempted to lift the bar, but found it was too heavy for him to lift. It's a poltergeist. Yeah. Mm. They're not nice. No. No. The most frightening possible spirit at the Dakota is the one with the most ominous name. The Phantom of the Dakota. Sometimes called the Mad Slasher. Oh. This possible spirit never hurt anyone, though not for lack of trying. It started when people noticed that someone was vandalizing the newly installed elevators, which were coincidentally designed by Joe Melsner before his death. The elevators were being attacked with what seemed to be a knife. Giant slashes ran through the paneled walls too high to have been done by a child and so deep that whoever was doing it had to be very strong. Every week, the panels would be replaced, only to be slashed up a few days later. Oh my goodness, busy. Mm -hmm. As this was going on, odd piles of shredded paper were found in the halls by the ninth floor, (laughs) piled up in a fashion that that suggested someone was looking to start a fire. Residents began to become suspicious of each other. Rumors spread about who was behind all of this. Things reached a boiling point when a can of paint fell from the roof into the courtyard, just barely missing a tenant. Oh, God. The strangest part of it was there was no painting or remodeling happening at the time. There was no reason for a can of paint to be on the roof. Phantom paint. Phantom paint. A group of residents of the building took it upon themselves to set up a secret spy club. You would have been part of this spy club. 1,000%. They would set themselves up in hiding spots and, with binoculars, watch the comings and goings between the various buildings. All they found were multiple spouses were having affairs. Oh. The phantom of the Dakota seemed to disappear as quickly as he appeared. Some believe that it was that old, bald, shorty Mr. Clark coming back (laughs) once more, unhappy with the new elevators. (laughs) That's it. Just the elevators. The most recent events were documented by Frederick and Suzanne Weinstein. Not to be confused with the bad Mm. Weinsteins. (laughs) It started with the sound of footsteps in their dining room, as if someone was frantically pacing back and forth. It seems that this pacing spirit has something against Frederick, who has found himself repeatedly injured in the dining room. Chairs have been pulled out from under him. He has been pushed by someone who wasn't there. And on multiple occasions, it has seemed like the rug has been pulled out from under his feet. Quite literally. Quite literally. One night on his way home, Frederick looked up to his living room window and was shocked to see the lights were on. Even more shocking to him was that the light was coming from a crystal chandelier, seeing as there were no chandeliers in the Weinstein's apartment. Uh, 
Freddie checked again, making sure he was looking at the third floor corner window that was his home. Still, the crystal chandelier hung in place, lighting up the room. When Frederick entered his apartment, it was dark, and sure enough, there was no crystal chandelier. Possibly the creepiest thing to happen to Frederick happened shortly after he played with his children. When Frederick and his kids were goofing around with a Ouija-style game that uses letter tiles instead of the board and pointer. During the game, the spirit messages suggested that the Weinsteins were in contact with the ghost of a little girl, possibly the young girl, that got wrongfully blamed for the death of a painter in the 30s. Hmm. When the game was done, Frederick put all the pieces away, stacking the wood tiles on a bookshelf. By the way, this is a very bad game. Yes. Don't play that game. Do not play with Ouija boards. Don't do it. So bad. Or this little lettering Ouija boards thing, unless you are so know what you're doing, which even then, don't do it. Yeah, you're welcoming danger into your life. Um, uh Uh-huh. Literally. Literally. Hi, Moosh. Anyway, so days later, Frederick found two of the word tiles in the pockets of his suit. He came across a third tile in his eyeglass case. The three tiles were I, C, U. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. Yeah. <sighs> Don't look at me. And lastly, the ghost of John Lennon. <gasps> Stories of numerous sightings of John leaned against the archway where he died, surrounded by an eerie light with a look on his face that warned he didn't feel like being bothered. Residents and passersby would stare at the mirage until it vanished, sometimes standing there several minutes. Yeah, rightfully so. I would too. Mm-hmm. I would be like, never, never blink. No. That's most, John Lennon. Most famously, Yoko herself claimed to have found John sitting at their <gasps> piano in their apartment. Oh my God, I got chills. When she happened upon him, he turned to her and told her, do not be afraid. I am still here with you. Stop. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I buy that. I don't know if I buy it either. She might have dreamed it. Yeah, but that's really sweet. But if it's what she needs to feel or believe, then yeah, that's for Yoko to know and us to question, mm-hmm. I guess. My second favorite beetle. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the Dakota. Shoot. My sources are none of Wikipedia. Whoa. The lineup article, Eternal Residence, the Ghosts of New York City's Historic Dakota Building by Oren Gray. 13th floor article, The Haunting of New York's Infamous Dakota Building by Derek Faraci. And a medium.com article, Haunted New York City, the Dakota Building by Brianna Prieto. I mean, I, all those stories did not make me want to go to there. No, well, it's it's not a it's not it's a residence, so we wouldn't right. be able to go to there. That's we true. can stand out front of there. I don't think it's a safe place to stand out front of. No, it sounds like it's bad to be outside. Yeah, of yeah. There's a whole lot of death and dying just right out front, but it always seems to be residents of the building, which is crazier. No, I'm good. Yeah, is, yeah. Is it like cursed? Like, what's going on? With I that? have no idea. I just, I always think. I mean, I'm sure it'll be covered in more in depth because. Mark David Chapman was a crazy person. Um, Mm -hmm. Is that his name? Mark David Chapman? Mark something Chapman. I believe so. I Uh, should probably know that. Yeah. Being a Beatles fan that I am. But it it demanded, like, fans were standing there. Yeah. And they watched their idol be shot in front of them. I mean, like, like, I don't even want to say the words out loud. Yeah. But, like. No, no, no. I don't. Just think of no, 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 no. I don't want to think about it. It's, it's so, it's something, it's terrifying. Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. We take our idols very seriously. We take our idols very seriously. They're a source of comfort and Mm -hmm. happiness. And we don't, well, you know, don't, I don't put on, put your idols on a pedestal. No. They're humans. They are. They're still, you know, they're for a source of comfort and to be witness to your comfort being extinguished. That would be tray tragique. Not here for it. Yeah. It was like, it was pretty horrific when Heath Ledger passed away. Oh my God. Yeah. And he wasn't murdered. Yeah. But. That was one of ours. Yeah. Luckily, like, luckily, we have not, you know, lived through yeah. somebody we loved being murdered. And Aaliyah. Aaliyah was terrible. Yeah. Aaliyah was terrible. She was 22 years old. She was, mm-hmm. that was terrible. That was a big one. Again, you know, not murdered, but still extremely tragic. Yeah, too young. Ugh. Oh, well, Michael Jackson, murdered. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Whether it was murder by negligence or on purpose, it was murder. I mean, we, we unfortunately are friends with... A few people who experienced the death of Christina Grimmie, right. who they knew personally. Yeah. And that was one of the craziest. That was horrific. That was horrific. We didn't know her, and we weren't a fan of her. We're not going to sit here and pretend like, you know, we had an investment in that. But it was still so, like, I think it shook us so hard because it just seemed like something that 
can't happen. Yeah. Whew. Something that definitely should not have happened. No. For obvious reasons, but. Um, and it's a young girl thinking she was meeting fans. And again, that happened in front of her fans. Yeah. And also, it's like, it's Christina Grimmy. How did she piss you off so bad? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it was just random, like. Yeah, I don't know. He just wanted to make a splash, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you can't ever Typically really make is. any sense of that. No. Which is good. I would be very uh, alarmed if you were able to Oh, my God. Do you remember that old, st- it's not. It's not a story. It actually happened. It was in the news of that guy that was stalking Joss Stone. Yes. And they arrested him outside her house and he had like black trash bags, like a hacksaw or something mm-hmm. like rope, all the stuff to like clearly murder her, dismember her, put her in trash bags and dispose of her body. Yeah. Like that was insane. I cannot imagine being Joss Stone. That was like many years ago. Wasn't it was it? many years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's. T- it oh, happened my. with another like famous starlet. Some. I don't know. It might have been. I'm sure. I'm sure it's, it's either with- like Selena Gomez or Ariana Grande or Billie Eilish. It was one of them. I'm sure it's happened with plenty of them. <laughs> but that was caught and they yeah. found this stuff in their car again. Yuck. You want to hear about demons? I do. I want to hear about demons so much. Okay. I want to stop talking about horrible celebrity things that are keep popping in my head. All right. Let's drink some water. Bye, Izzy. Tell me. It was fun rubbing your belly. Did you feel her touching your leg the whole yes, time you were reading? Yes, she kept patting me. <laughs> I was just trying to ignore her. <laughs> I think she was just checking on you to make sure she uh, that you had some comfort. I did. I was comforted. After they were displaced by Hurricane Agnes in 1972, Janet and Jack Smurl. Smurl. <laughs> Smurl. You know what I'm saying so far? No. Okay. Um, Janet and Jack Smurl moved their family, including their young daughters and Jack's parents, to a duplex home on Chase Street in West Pitson. Sorry. In West Pittston. Pennsylvania. A bit of a fixer-upper, they put their efforts into repainting, retooling, and repairs. It was at this time that the eerie activity began, naturally. Naturally. Initially, the episodes were nothing crazy. Doors would open and close, toilets would flush, tools went missing, then reappeared. Old wall stains seeped through fresh coats of paint. Yikes, I hate that part. Yeah. Mm -mm. Then the kitchen appliances started to catch fire, even though they were unplugged natural and the smurls began to lose (laughs) (laughs) i gotta let it go it's not it's like smurfs with an l (laughs) and the smurls began to lose sleep due to growling noises hey no and putrid stenches overwhelming the house only to disperse moments later the only stinky stenches in our apartment was the fact the cats kept peeing on the carpet (laughs) izzy and rue izzy and rue oh fluffy little snuggies all stuck with you Rue was our original assistant. He was the OG assistant. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Anyway, moment of silence. Moment for of Rue. silence. Pour one out for our homie Rue. Yeah. <laughs> Soon, the Smurls haunting began to take a darker turn. Dun dun dun. Mary, Jack's mother, suffered a heart attack that they believe was affiliated with the haunting. Hmm. Mary and Janet both claimed to have heard voices that sounded like one another. Uh-uh. Jan- yes. Janet thought she heard her mother-in-law calling her name. While Mary thought she heard Janet and Jack in the throes of an argument using a plethora of expletives. Not a plethora Mm -hmm. of expletives. Yes. Very bad words. Naughty, naughty words. Ominous black math. (laughs) Black math? You said there would be no (laughs) math. Ominous black masses formed and floated throughout the home. Janet said she was visited in the dead of night by a malevolent force that molested her in her sleep. No. Then Jack joined the club. Lying in bed with Janet, he heard someone whispering, a young woman it seemed. When he turned to face his wife, he watched the shadowy figure run up her leg. A light fixture once fell from their ceiling, cutting one of the daughters on impact. The family dog, a German shepherd, was thrown against the wall. At one no! Time. Yeah, I'm unacceptable. Don't throw their assistants Throw around. the dad, don't throw the assistants. Ugh. Janet said she was picked up by an invisible presence dangling some six feet in the air Damn it, Janet. and then tossed across the room. Jack claimed a succubus. Okay, I'm sorry in advance for this. What? Jack claimed a succubus entered the living room and raped him while a baseball game played on the TV. Not during baseball. Yeah. Even neighbors reporting, reported hearing screams from the house while the family was out. Uh-uh! No! <laughs> Uh, uh, that's 
screaming howls. <laughs> it's very spoopy. Oh, I don't like that part. Why? I don't know why that part, especially. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> screaming howls. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Terrified, naturally. <laughs> the Smurls contacted self taught demonologist duo Ed and Lorraine Warren. Oh, yeah, there they are. Mm-hmm, there they are. Though the Smurls had their skeptics, they had true believers in Ed. Is this the conjuring? Yes. Oh, cool. Okay. I think it's one of the conjurings. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. Wait, hold on. I'm trying. It might be conjuring three. Okay, I was going to say it's not con. It's not the first conjuring. I meant to look that up written. and I forgot, but it, I think it's the conjuring three that they based this off of. Okay. Um, but anyway, so the, the Smurls other skeptics, obviously, Ed and Lorraine were not one of them. Um, Ed specifically believed that the Smurls were haunted. He told the Times leader in 1986 that, quote, the ghost devil, or whatever you call it, is in that home, end quote. Mm. He also claimed to have audio tapes of rapping, knocking, and dark shadows. I really hope rapping as in hip-hop rapping, but probably not. Yo, 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 I'm here for your soul. I'm a rapper now. You wanted me to keep going. Yeah, I'm not I'm that good. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm not that good. I was trying to think of second verse, and I'm not that good either. Second verse, second verse. Where's Nixon first. music when we need him? Yeah, we need Nixon. Where is Nixon? Download Nixon on wherever you download music. Yeah, Spotify, Apple Music. You can find him everywhere. <laughs> um, it's two X's. Man. So, yeah, he he has, he has claimed to have some audio tapes of all that stuff um, that he attributed to a, de- a demonic entity and he said during the first night at the home, he felt the temperature drop and saw a dark mass form in front of him after he used the name of Jesus Christ, a crucifix, holy water, and holy oil. Holy oil? That's for sure that. After inspecting the house, Lorraine, a clairvoyant with several well-known paranormal investigations under her belt, including the Amityville house, um, concluded that the Smurls shared their home with four spirits. A harmless elderly woman, a young and possibly violent girl, a man who suffered and died in the home, and of course, a demon that used the three spirits to destroy the Smurl family. Group prayer sessions and exorcisms were conducted, yet the attacks continued. So the Smurls took their story public in hopes that someone might hear of their plight and know how to help. Excuse me, I'm not getting emotional. I just have she is, she's crying. She's crying, crying. so much. Um, but the family got more than they bargained for. The press latched on like a malicious spirit refused to leave. Writing about the sensation for a 2016 Halloween story in Pits in Progress, reporter Jack Smiles. <laughs> All these the names Jack are fake. Smiles. It makes me miles <laughs> to where I feel I'm sure. Just changed his name. Sorry. We- anyway. His um, name is Jack Smiles Jack for Smiles, real. Jack Smiles, he's a reporter. So we've got the Smurls and the Smiles. Yeah, and he said, quote, After the Smurls went public with their descriptions of what was happening in their modest half-double home on Chase Street in West Pittston, their story became a media phenomenon going viral the old-fashioned way, <laughs> through print and television. Local and out-of-town stations and papers covered it. Wire services, stories, ran in major dailies from New York to California. Oddballs. Oddballs. Um, oddballs. <laughs> Why the word's making me laugh? Why did I write oddballs? I don't know. Oh, man. So, oddballs. <laughs> oddballs. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get past it. I'm sleepy. Okay. Oddballs. <laughs> okay, weird people camp out. <laughs> I can't, can't, can't continue. <laughs> we got the giggles and shit. Weird people camped out in front of their house, cameras <laughs> flashed, <laughs> and reporters flooded their lawns. Their lawn. They only have one lawn. <laughs> oh, God. Demons. <sighs> Scary. Cars of onlookers <laughs> cruised by, hoping to catch a glimpse of something from another dimension. The Smurl family found themselves at the center of a media circus. Clearly. Representatives from the Roman Catholic Church in Scranton were uncertain. Why is everything in Scranton? Scranton. Scranton. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Scranton. We're back in Scranton. Scranton. Well, because Scranton is not far from West Pitson. Ah. Uh, is, like, um, is West Pitson where the Shroot Farm is? Maybe. 
No, I don't think so. No? Anyway. Um, yeah, representatives from the Roman Catholic Church in Scranton were uncertain as to what might be causing the activity. Multiple priests visited the Smurls, multiple, to bless their home. They reportedly encountered no harmful activity while on the property. In 1986, an area priest actually moved into the household, hoping to witness the demonic force firsthand, uh, but nothing stirred. After two nights without issue, he left. He literally moved in for two nights. He's like, nah, I'm good. He's like, hmm. That's enough. Mm-hmm. Um, the Smurl story gained more and more attention to the point that Scranton native actor-writer Jason Miller, best known as Father Karras in The Exorcist, oh, huh? visited the home. He didn't necessarily believe that the source of the family's turmoil was a, demo- a demonic p- presence, um, but he did believe something was going on in their home. He told the Scranton Times that the Smurls He's feared- professional now because he played a priest on <laughs> Yes. Oh, That's what I find hilarious, too. Oh, I'm, I'm an expert Leave now. me to it. Uh, But yeah, he told the Scranton Times that the Smurls feared that the infestation would eventually get to the family. Did one of the, did one of the demons go, why you do this to me, Nini? Why you do this to me? Why you do this to me, Nini? Maybe. Maybe. Um, In 1987, the year we were born, hey-oh. Hey-oh. The family packed up and left their Chase Street duplex. Supernatural phenomena reportedly followed them to their new home. Phenomena? So it sounds like not the home. The home was not haunted. It sounds like the Smurl family was haunted. No, no, no. Which might explain why the priests wasn't experiencing anything because the family wasn't there. Yeah. Um, but the screaming house. Yeah, the, the screaming house. Is, there. I mean, they're still connected to it. They I may have know. took things from the house. Yeah. That uh, that they were attached to. Yeah. So yeah, they reportedly followed them to their new home until a church-sanctioned exorcism in 1989 cleared the house of its activity. Hmm. It's a long time. Phew. It's like 10 years to deal with that. Oh, hell no. Right? Mm-mm. Did Thank I, you. Did I make up that math? 1972. Oh, longer than that. Oh, my God. Holy cow, 15 years. <sighs> that's a long... That's, that's a, way too long. That demons hit puberty. All right, well, at least they got rid of it eventually. <laughs> hey, bright side. Um, since then, experts, priests, television producers, and journalists have all scrutinized the Smurl story including journalist Robert Curran and the Warrens themselves, who chronicled the Smurl case in a book titled The Haunted, One Family's Nightmare, which was later adapted into a movie in 1991 starring Sally Kirkland and Jeffrey DeMunn, which I watched today. You did? I have to tell you all about it. Is it good? I'll tell you at the end of this, yes. Okay. Many reviewers regarded the book as one-sided, echoing skeptics who saw rational explanations behind the otherworldly claims of the Smurl family. The subsequent owners of the Chase Street duplex say nothing unusual has ever happened in their home. Well, again, no. No, duh. It followed the small yeah. family out. Anyway, I believe it because I just, I like to believe that stuff. It just seems like there's way too much in there to make up. Yeah. So to those arguing the Smurls were after fame and money, their daughter, Karen Smurl, spoke out in 2017. She told the Pittston Progress, quote, we never made money from the book or the movie. Who would want to go through all that media and public bashing? To the naysayers, I hope it doesn't... Oh, God, that... Okay, sorry, that, like, maximized and scared me. Mm -hmm. To the naysayers, I hope it doesn't take something as extreme as what we went through to make them believers. We wouldn't wish our experiences on anyone. Sheesh. There was a lot of comparisons to Amityville Horror, as the film was released in 1979 around the time of the Smurls haunting. Similar events that occurred at Amityville also occurred at the Chase Street residence, which is interesting because the Warrens also investigated Amityville, the Amityville Horror House. Right. Right. Um, the Smurls reported that a psychic told them that their house, like the one in Amityville, was the scene of a brutal murder. And indeed, Hauntington, Pennsylvania... Haun- sorry. <laughs> Huntington? And indeed, Hauntingly, Pennsylvania, did discover a shocking killing in West Pitson, but it occurred decades before and blocks away from the Smurl house. So it wasn't where the Smurl house was, mm-hmm. but not far from the Smurl house. Okay. Um, one coincidence between Amityville and this case is quite surprising, however. The name of this West Pitson murderer was Lutz, the same surname huh. as the family in the Amityville case, because I think it was George Lutz. Yeah, right? it was George Lutz. So, well, jo- yeah. yeah. Yeah, George Lutz was Amityville. Amityville. Um, so John Lutz in 1899. No. That was the movie. Yeah, Paranormal Experiences of the Lutz Family, but it's um, the DeFeos that were the, the 
the guy that killed the family is was DeFeo, oh. and he, the family was the DeFeos, and then the Lutz family moved in oh. and experienced the haunting. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. anyway, but that was George Lutz, right? Was George that? Lutz, yeah. Yeah. Well, John Lutz, in 1899, killed his wife, Augusta, with a heavy, long-handled axe. Two blows to the head. She was alive when she was discovered. No! Yeah, but she died a day later from her injuries. Oh, my God. She had to live a whole day like that? Mm -hmm. John tried to commit suicide immediately after by slicing his own throat with a pocket knife, but the cut was not deep enough to take his own life. Yeah, have you seen how small pocket knives are? Jesus. (laughs) Stupid. Um, When the chief of police discovered John bleeding on the floor, John claimed, quote, something in my head made me do it, end quote. John Lutz was hanged on the morning of January 21st, 1902. Jeez. Yeah. So my sources are. Oh, okay. <laughs> article for the lineup called Nightmare on Chase Street, The Smurl Family Haunting by Deanna Janes. Um, horror blogger Brian Finelli, entry from June 17th, 2019, entitled Revisiting the Smurl Story and the Haunted. Mm-hmm. Hauntingly, Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania Oddities blog, The Lutz Axe Murder. That's how I got the info about the murder. Wow. Oh. What happened there? Um, so let me tell you about this movie I watched. Yes, please. Everybody in their life needs to go on YouTube right now. Okay. Every, everybody in life. And type in The Haunted 1991 and watch this movie that is not synced. No. <laughs> that is quite possibly as good as The Room. Oh. Oh. If you've seen The Room. Uh, oh. You know what I mean. Uh, hi, Mark. Oh my God. It's that good. I mean, I kind of... It's tough to hold... I, I kind of want to show you snippets of it after we're done recording. <sighs> and I'll put it up on, on our Patreon page so people the movie, can find yeah. it. Yeah. Because... <laughs> like, but I think the comments is what made me so interested in watching this movie. Right. Is that the comments underneath it were all like, this movie freaked me out. This movie was so good. Like, all the comments were pretty positive. Oh. And I'm watching this movie, and I'm literally laughing out loud. Mind you, I would know I was at work, but I do a late shift, and we kind of, for the last few hours of work, we're kind of sitting there waiting for the crew to wrap mm-hmm. um, and not doing anything. So I was watching the movie at work. Sorry. <laughs> not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Anyway, but I was watching this movie, and I was dying laughing. You know, yeah, it, so it's, is it is it supposed to be not synced up? It is supposed to be synced up but i think youtube uploaded oh, it yeah. correctly sometimes they have to do that in order mm. to upload a movie without it being copyright infringement oh interesting well i didn't i couldn't find it anywhere else okay so youtube it was but oh what a joy <laughs> oh boy oh what a joy oh boy oh my god the um the scene with the succubus and the baseball on the tv oh oh no they actually show that <laughs> oh you're laughing <laughs> Well, the the demon's face kept changing into different faces. Oh. And the effects are so bad. Oh. Oh, my God. It was gold. It was <laughs> so gold. I wish I could make it my how wonderful, but it's part of my story, so I can't. No, you can't. <laughs> you, you can't put a, a oh demon sodomizing a man. Is your how wonderful? Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> it was so good. Wow. Oh, my God. The, the part that was scary, though, is... Um, when they describe in the story about how um the screaming house that part wasn't that scary in the movie well but um when she hears her mother-in-law call her name no yeah that was really creepy is it like a distant just sounded like her mother-in-law and then she would walk into the room and the mother-in-law wasn't there i hate that but you know have you heard of like uh like doppelgangers yeah where they'll I don't... like look like someone you know yeah yeah no i'm not i'm not down with that no well, I th- there's stories of people who, like, find their doppelganger Ooh. and befriend them. And they're, like, there's, like, pictures of them with their doppelganger. And it's, like, that is their identical twin. And it's somebody from, like, a different part of the world who doesn't even really speak English and was oh. definitely not adopted. So it's, like. Weird. It's It freaks me out. That right. There's probably somebody who looks exactly like you somewhere else in the world. Hey, Sarah Bareilles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Whitney Cummings. Hey, hey, Juliette Lewis. What's up? Um, I was referring to doppelganger like ghosts. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, where right, they'll right. like I know look and sound like people you know. Yeah, I hate that. Yucky. I hate that so much. I think that might have been what was going on with my brother in my grandpa's house. I think 
sometimes it was making him believe it was my grandpa when it wasn't. Oh my God, my eyes are going to water. I, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm so curious to talk to him about it to see if he thought it was a demon or not. Yeah. When, when I get really freaked out, my eyes start watering. Yeah. I get like antsy. Like my, my toes feel like they're starting to like be made of jello and I can't sit still. Like the screaming house. Yeah, I used to call it, I used to say my toes were whizzy and no. when I was a kid because I didn't know how else to describe it. Yeah. So when something really grossed me out, I go, my toes are whizzy. <laughs> and my parents thought that was the funniest thing ever and that's what they still say. That's well, that's what my mom still says. Yeah, yeah. that's really cute. <laughs> yeah, my toes are whizzy. Oh, yay, yay. Well, yeah. <sighs> that was a spoopy episode. That was, but that was a good, that was a good first run with the, with the old demons. Yeah. So I think it's The Conjuring 3, I believe, is what the Smurl House. Yeah. Um, they made a movie based off of the Smurl House. Yeah. Chase we'll Street. look into that specifically yeah. and put the trailer up there. Yeah. Um, well, we're not going to pull a topic because our next episode is a special episode. It is. It's another guest episode. We have a special announcement. It's the guest. To me. Yes. Who's it? Who is it? It's Grandmaster Rose. Grandmaster Rose. It's my house. We'll see if we can get her to rap for us. It's my mom. Oh, no. We don't want to encourage that. (laughs) (laughs) No. She will hard know it. So. uh, Very quickly. My dear, my, my dear, dear mother is um, going to safely travel Mm -hmm. from Chicago to California. She hasn't been here in a year. Yes. Um, she's got her PPE ready. She's ready to Nobody's go. Nobody's sitting next to her on the plane. Good. She's quarantining until she comes here, and then we're not going anywhere either, so nobody yell at us. Yeah. Haven't seen my mom since July. We'll get a cute little visit in. So we're getting a cute little, you know, not yeah. doing anything, just hanging out at home, visit. Um, and then uh, we'll the get ep- her to record. Yeah. Maybe tell some stories of her own. She's got some stories for it'll, sure. It'll be similar to the episode, the Halloween special, where we just kind of um, shoot the shit. Yeah, and discuss Halloween or not Halloween. We discuss horror stories mm-hmm. that we've experienced. Or this one, I don't know if no, if we'll necessarily have stories to tell. It'll probably just be uh, encouraging my mom's stories and, yes. and talking to her about those, kind of interviewing her. Yes, one thousand about uh, her her experiences because she said quite a few and she has her own set of beliefs and Mm -hmm. it'll be uh, it'll be fun to talk to her yeah it probably won't be the last time she'll be on the show so no i'm sure not i'm sure Um, and then the episode after that um i tanya lee will be covering a story of lore yep and i'll be uh doing celeb deaths so that'll be um the episode after grandmaster rose exactly um because we won't pick our topics during that episode because we already know what the next one is going to be exactly so look forward to that but in the meantime let's talk about something wonderful okay i mean it's always it's probably because we're in quarantine so it's probably always going to be something uh something i've watched of course but it's uh i kicked off the holiday season today (laughs) i started watching dash and lily on netflix and uh, expecting it just to be like a cheesy young adult Christmas TV series. And it is delightful. Yeah. It's not cheesy. I'll have to watch it's, it. Yeah. It's not. It's so easy to watch. 22 minute episodes, eight episodes. Yeah. Super easy. And it's it's just a treat. And oh. I highly suggest it. It's charming. It's sweet. I was smiling during it. Um, <laughs> my, my other How Wonderful is I watched Robin Hood Men in Tights. For the oh. first time in probably well over a decade um, last night. And, I mean, this is a 19-year-old Dave Chappelle. Oh, my gosh. It's a Mel Brooks movie. Yeah. And it it holds up. It's still really funny. Oh, I want to rewatch that. Yeah. Well, it's right there. <laughs> it's right there. It's right there for your, for your entertainment. What about you? What's your How Wonderful? Well, I was driving home from work today trying to think of what my How Wonderful was going to be, mm-hmm. and I missed my exit. Oh, I'm <laughs> thinking really like, hard. Um, really didn't. That was not a wonderful. No, it really didn't add to my clock, thankfully. But um, anyway, I was trying to think of my How Wonderful, and I was kind of, not that there's not wonderful things going on in the world, and you know, and that there aren't wonderful things to talk mm-hmm. about, but I was struggling to think of a wonderful I, I struggle most of the time. Um, and, and I'm a pretty optimistic, happy person, so yeah. that was a weird one. But um, I thought, you know, like, when I can't think of a how wonderful, maybe that relates to my current state, why don't I think about something wonderful that I just love um, that's just, like, one of my favorite things? Okay. And I can just start giving those out. All right, Julie Andrews. So let's go. What are a few of your favorite things? So the first thing that I thought of when I was thinking of something wonderful yeah. was Gilmore Girls. 
Yes. So if you are yeah. listening to this show and you are a fan of Gilmore Girls. Just the best show that's ever been on TV. We will keep you. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. I've been watching it at night to fall asleep to. Because you can't be sad when you watch Gilmore no. Girls. And it's just so. Uh, it's just so, it's so warm. It fills my heart. It makes me smile. It's so fall. It's so cozy. It's, yeah. It, it's, it is the equivalent it's a of warm, a warm blanket. Yeah, it's a warm blanket. In a show. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I watched, oh gosh, when did, how old was I? I was in high school when I started mm-hmm. watching it, and I did it the way I was supposed to with my mom. Right. My dad would go to sleep 1030 after the news. Me and her would make hot chocolate and watch Gilmore Girls on the couch. Ugh, swoon. It was the best. Um, and then I introduced you to it. Mm-hmm couple years ago now yeah but even in high school when you guys were watching it i would catch episodes and yeah i loved every episode i saw but you hadn't sat down committed to it yeah. until a couple of years ago and it's one of those shows that you probably could watch an episode here and there and mm-hmm. kind of keep up and be able to enjoy the episode without yeah. knowing what had happened before but so watching drama. it consecutively is just so much better it is um more and graham but yeah you know i'm a jess yeah, yeah. I'm like I a first future. watched I was a dean, and then when I rewatched, I was like, "Why? He's, He's so the bossy. worst." <sighs> um, but yeah, second watch, third watch, fourth watch, fifth watch, sixth watch, definitely a Jess. Yeah, I'm Luke a- and Jess. Luke and Jess Ugh. forever. But like, especially future Jess. But like, but also like Max. He was kind oh, of a yeah, G Max too. Was so sweet. We did, but uh, honestly, I'm on honestly, Max right now. I'm just my- here for Michelle. Yes, <laughs> Michelle, my bell. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Always and Sookie. Michelle and Sookie. Oh. I mean, that show introduced Melissa McCarthy. How do people not love it? Yeah, how can that not be wonderful? It gave us so many gifts. So many gifts. It gave us my love and Tamilia. Thank you. Yes. I'm out. Yes. <laughs> my love and Tamilia. America's father yes. and husband. Oh, dear God. That guy. Yeah. Oh, man. You still he haven't... can just be a whole how wonderful. She's, we'll just... she's still so behind in this. Is that she doesn't even know how Jack died yet. No, I don't know. Don't tell me. Don't speak. Don't come up my, on my social media and spoil it for me. Yeah, don't do that. Anyway. Okay. Gilmore Girls, mic drop. Gilmore Girls, that is a mic drop yeah. for me. Yeah. That's my how wonderful because I've been, and I guess it does pertain to something I've been experiencing this week. Not yeah. that that's the rule of our how wonderful, Just, but we tend to lean on something that we've yeah. experienced in the week that's wonderful. But um, I think I thought it might be fun to start shouting out a few of my favorite things. I like it. I'm and here for it. That's definitely one of my favorite TV shows, if not. You said you liked Maisel more than Gilmore Girls. Oh, I did like, I do like Maisel more than Gilmore Girls, to be honest. And that's, that's a hard thing to talk. But that's because of, it's um, just it's, such it's more a production. cinematic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to me, obviously, that's a big Ugh. deal. And the way they choreograph the background extras. Mm. And I think it's something people miss. Yeah. But the way the background extras move is literally like a dance and it's so fun to watch. Yeah, it's so cool. And then, you know, my other favorite show is Lost, which does not fit in there. No, it doesn't. Mm-mm. No. And so. now we're on a different and trajectory. now we're changing the topic. Uh, <laughs> anyway. anyway, do you want to give us a spiel? Sure. Uh, you can follow us on all of the social medias. And I do mean all of them. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube at How Awful Podcast. Whoop, whoop. You can follow our Patreon at uh, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash How Awful Podcast. What, what are you, uh, you going to find there? You, you can find blog posts. Oh. Mostly. You what are can, you saying? You can find source material. You can find extra little bits and bubs uh, linking you to videos we've mentioned, documentaries yes. pertaining to our subjects, our thoughts, our feelings, our utmost desires. Yeah. And sometimes we, we share secrets on the secrets. blog. Secrets. Sometimes. And eventually, we you know, once y'all make it worthwhile, we're going to make some videos. Yeah. It's getting um, there. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's chugging along. We got we got into some new ones this week. So we that's did. Fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, you can send us your stories, which we have one that we still haven't read. We'll do that when my mom's on the sh- on the because we won't have anything really to share. Oh yeah, so. and then we can read it to your mom. Yeah, that'll be uh, great. We'll do that. Deal. Exactly. Let's shake on Deal. it. Deal. That was that's a juicy one. All right. <laughs> um, so if you guys forgot that yes. was our hand. It makes farting sounds. We're not it does, actually since farting. we were children. <sighs> um, yeah, you can send us your stories if you've survived anything crazy, paranormal, UFOs, murder. Well, if you've survived murder, then it would have been attempted murder. Uh, r- literally anything that's crazy, you can send to howawfulpodcast at gmail.com. And if you have a hearing impaired friend, please link them to our YouTube where we transcribe the episodes yeah. for their enjoyment. Yeah, and um, if you go to www.howawfulpodcast.com, that'll link you to all, all of the things. All of the things, actually. So that's a perfect source if you need to 
to download or subscribe or um, like review us. Yeah, you can find be us there. nice. Yeah, tell your friends about us. We're still we're growing and we're we're um, we're grooving. Yeah, so we want to keep doing that. Thank you so much. This is your friendly weekly reminder from the How Awful Podcast Girls that Joe Biden is president because we said so. And Kamala And also, and also the whole United States said so. Yes. Anyway, thanks U.S. Thank you. Thanks us. Thanks us. (laughs) It's my birthday present to her. Thanks, B. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, so who are we? I'm B. I'm Tanya Lee. This is How Awful. How Awful. How Awful. As always, we've been B and Tanya Lee. Our logo was created by MJ Savard and our theme music courtesy of Nikki Liu.